Hey guys, um, welcome to the, um, the Ability Co-ops Erasmus Navigating a Disability <laughs> Q&A. Um, today we have two speakers, um, myself and Alva, who I'm going to introduce to you now. My name is Alva Kelly and I'm a final year European study student uh, with a physical disability. Um, my name is Jane, I'm a final year best student specialising in business and I have an invisible disability. Okay, so we're going to start with the first question and um, why did you want to go on exchange? Um, okay, so for me, um, because I study European studies and a year abroad is a compulsory component of our course, you study two languages and you choose one as your major language and you go to the country of your major language to study for a year. Um, and I was really keen not to miss out on that um, because it's really important for developing your language skills. So I was really looking forward to studying abroad for the year. Okay, um, with me, uh, Neurosis was actually an optional component of my course, but I taken um, two French, I taken French modules in my first two years, my junior freshman and senior freshman years. And um, I always adored French and I just really wanted to improve my language skills to boost my chances of employability after college. Um, I also just wanted to get out of Trinity for a year to experience something a bit different and to meet different people and to be exposed to different nationalities and different cultures. So yeah, yeah that's cool. That's an amazing experience for things like that and just broadening your horizons in general. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so then, because I was chose Italian as my major language, I had to choose a university in Italy and a suitable city in Italy to study for the year. Um, so for me, because I have a physical disability, I use a manual wheelchair the majority of the time. So for me, it was looking for somewhere that was accessible for wheelchairs, both within the university and outside of the university, because obviously you have to remember you're living in this city for the year. Public transport needs to be accessible. The streets need to be accessible for whatever your needs might be. And um, so after working closely with the disability service and working closely with my Erasmus coordinator, um, we decided on Milan. It was the most suitable place in Italy for me. And then from that point, we narrowed down the different universities in Milan until we settled on um, the University of Milan um, as the best choice for me. Um, what about you? How did you choose your university? Um, basically, I basically went into my Erasmus coordinator and I said that I wanted to go to France. And he and I, then I disclosed him that I had an invisible disability and he told me to go off and email the various universities I wanted to apply for. Um, I actually applied for two universities in Spain and three universities in France. And the French ones were my top three because I have a better knowledge of French than I do of Spanish. And mm -hmm. the two universities that got back to me quite promptly, I decided that I was going to choose between them. So I got offered place, I got, I got offered, um, not offered, but I got um, responses from ESET, which is in Paris, and Neoma Business School, which is in Rouen. Uh, I chose Neoma over ESET because I wanted to um, go to Rouen because I thought I'd be exposed to French a lot more there. And also I wanted to save a bit of money because living in Dublin <laughs> is already expensive. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Oh stop. Um but like yeah, so the woman got back to me really quickly and they were um putting me in contact with the disability uh with their equivalent of the disability service there. So I was just like, this sounds really promising and that really calmed me down. So I was just like, yeah, let's just kind of go with it. So I put that as my first choice and luckily I got offered my first choice. So yeah. Um what preparation did you do like before departure and did you have any worries before pre-departure? Yeah, so that's what I was just thinking. Actually, for me, it wasn't um, an extremely straightforward process because um, the two choices for studying Italian for my course originally was Siena and Pavia. And having looked into both of those places, they weren't very accessible. So we had to kind of go to the drawing board. And when we decided on Milan, that meant we had to draw up a new Erasmus agreement between the University of Milan and between Trinity, um, which I'm like so happy that they were able to do but it does take time and um, so I was a little bit worried about that being finalized on time so what I would actually say is really important is as soon as you decided you want to do Erasmus or you're even just interested in studying abroad to try to arrange meetings with your disability officer 
as soon as possible and any relevant people in your department just to get the ball rolling and um, just because you don't want to be stressed out if there are any delays and you want to give yourself plenty of time to make sure you can really make the right decision for you. Um, so that was one concern, just making sure everything was done on time. And then just, I suppose, um, I had to, you know, look up online. Like I was on Google Maps Street View, going around the town, seeing what it looked like. Um, and then... The other thing is accommodation. Um, obviously I wanted to find somewhere that was accessible for a wheelchair user, which was a challenge. Um, now luckily when we got in contact with my university, they reserved an accessible room for me in their student residence. Um, so I definitely recommend seeing if that's available in the university you're looking at um, because it is difficult to find in a lot of European cities accommodation that has an elevator. And then if the elevator is you know, modern enough and big enough to actually be able to accommodate a wheelchair as well. And um, so those were my concerns, but they're definitely manageable. You just have to put in a lot of research um, and be really prepared just to ensure that everything runs smoothly. Um, yeah. You? yeah, no, definitely. I was definitely agree with what you're saying. Like preparation is key. Like I already said, I've spoken to my RAS coordinator and sent off the various <laughs> emails. And then um, when I got replies, from ISEC and Neoma, I was like, I'm gonna choose between these two. The other yeah. four universities, uh, the other three universities got back to me well before I actually got, well, after I got my RAS offer. So I got offered Neoma and then um, my, the business exchange coordinator was like, it's probably best to arrange an appointment with the disability service and they can give you more info on how to mm -hmm. receive your supports abroad and like, just to keep in contact with them. So I met with them and, they were, they were saying to me about how like your lens report can work abroad and that it's a good starting point to, yeah. it's a good starting point to use when you're dealing with your host institutions um, disability service. So that's what I did basically. Um, I think preparation, like you said, is key. And the fact that like, um, for me, obviously, because I have an invisible debt, disability, uh, accessibility isn't a big requirement for me, but I did have to make sure that my the supports that I got in Trinity were available in some shape or form in Rouen and and yeah. um, basically yeah no um the disability service in uh, Neoma were really helpful I emailed the disability coordinator beforehand and um <clears throat> they were they reassured me that I would get my supports and that she even arranged a meeting for me for the first two I think it was the first week or two in Rouen so I could um meet with her and like discuss further my requirements so everything was fine basically like you said like if you do your preparation beforehand if you get it on it now yeah. in like November you'll be so you'll be so fine for your process just like you need to be you need to be ahead of all the others on your course and you need to really be on the ball and you need to just be aware and as well um Administra administration in continental European countries yeah. can be a bit of a pain and it can, ta it can take a while but you'll get yeah. there eventually a few follow-up emails from Trinity can help as well so um yeah, yeah no definitely exactly. <laughs> that sounded great, yeah, just that great. <laughs> that's just following on to the next question like what kind of supports did you receive from both Trinity and um the University of Milan yeah so I was the same as you I got in got in contact with the disability service in my university in Milan um, and they communicated with the disability service in Trinity and like you said the lens report is really useful because it just has everything detailed exactly what you need and they can like read that themselves and put it into put a plan into place for you for in their university and um, so then like you were saying it was the same for me the first week when I arrived in Milan I met with the Erasmus coordinator there and they introduced me to the staff in the disability service I think on my second day in Milan and um, and it was really helpful we just talked through you know what I what uh, supports I received in Trinity what supports they could offer me there and um, now for me because I have a physical disability it is mostly accessibility in terms of ramps and in terms of what the classroom setup is like and um, so it was straightforward enough they were able to look at the timetable what modules I had chosen and ensure that they were all taking place in accessible um, classrooms and in accessible lecture halls um, and they gave me just their email their contact information their phone number so that if I had any problems I could contact them really easily so 
it's just really great to make sure you kind of make that contact when you arrive so that if you have any issues, you know exactly who to go to. Okay, perfect. And so the next question is, it kind of follows on all the questions they're following on after each other is, did you apply for um, Erasmus Plus Disability Funding? And if so, if you qualified for it, how did you use it? Yeah, so I did apply and I did qualify for it. Um, and I definitely recommend applying um, because it can be really helpful. I personally um, used it for extra travel costs that I might have. So for example, because I use a wheelchair, I can't carry my luggage or things like that. So I use that to have an extra person come with me and help me bring all of my stuff to Milan basically. Um, and then also because in Milan, some forms of public transport are accessible, but not all of them are. If there were times where I needed to get from one place to another, um, but the public transport wasn't accessible, I could get a taxi, but it wasn't, you know, that I was having to pay for a taxi all the time, I could use some of my funding for that. And then one other thing, which was actually really, really helpful, while I was away, I did find some of the streets had um, cobblestones, uh, or if I wanted to go traveling for a weekend, but the town I was going to had loads of cobblestones, um, it just wasn't suitable for the wheelchair and it was actually a bit dangerous in case, you know, it tipped over. So I was able to purchase um, a piece of equipment that I attached onto the front of my wheelchair and allowed me to go smoothly over cobblestones and the funding um, covered that as well. But I know when I was applying, um, you know, if you need a, a carer or extra assistance for the duration that you're there or any type of medical, medical equipment, it covers that as well. Like it covers a whole host of different things. So I definitely recommend looking into that. Um, so basically, with, in my case, I didn't qualify for it, but I still got the route. This just just add in that you still get the regular Erasmus grant, mm -hmm. like everybody else. Disability yeah. funding is just an extra, uh, just a, an extra part of the grant that you can use to get to be yeah. to get more accessible support. So you'll still get your Erasmus grant like normal. For me, I think in for France last year it was two hundred and fifty euros per month. And I got yeah. that for a 10 month period. But as far as I know, it's increased to 300 euros now because of COVID. So you'll get 300 euros a month. Obviously, yeah. like it won't cover everything, but it definitely did cover like my accommodation and stuff. And yeah. I think um, I paid 370 for my accommodation. And if you go, if you do end up doing an Erasmus in France, there's this thing called um, the CAF. It's part of French Social Security. And you get a reduction on your accommodation if you're a student. So I actually I only ended up paying 300 because the CAF will give me 70 euros back each month. And obviously it's dependent on your accommodation. It's dependent on so many things like how many square meters your apartment is and all this. Yeah. And yeah, so just to add in that you still get the, the normal Erasmus grant as normal, even if you're getting the disability grant as well. So yeah, um, did you face um, did you face many challenges while you were abroad? Um, I think when I first arrived, it was definitely the most challenging part of it because it was sort of getting used to um, living in a city that isn't as accessible as Dublin is um, and kind of figuring out what public transport I can use, what public transport I can't use. Because it, it was, you know, some of the trams were accessible, some of them weren't. It depended on the number and on the route and some of the metro stations were and some of them weren't. And there was like, it took me a long time to figure out where all the lifts were for the different metro stations. Like I'd just be going up and down looking for a lift. So it was definitely challenging. Um, and just kind of like, like it would be for any student going on Erasmus, whether you have a disability or not, you have to find your feet at first. Um, and, you know, you're, for me, I was moving away for the first time, living by myself. Um, but I'd say definitely it was just kind of figuring out, you know, I knew that certain things were accessible, but I just didn't know how to use them or how to navigate them. Um, and, you know, even just kind of getting used to within the university, knowing which staff to go to if I needed something change in the room like if if there were steps leading up to the desk who would be able to get me a regular table to use without having to use the stairs and um, but once you kind of get through that first month where you're kind of figuring everything out it does get a lot easier I would say um what about you did you face any challenges um the only thing I did face is that um in France when you go when you present with a disability to your college disability service they require you to get a medical note from just a GP okay. um, just GP just to back up your claim so basically I did go to the GP the college GP yeah. 
unfortunately all my paperwork was in English and she didn't speak that much English so I had to translate a lot that's the only like big difficulty yeah. I faced and um, like I said I wasn't at a, like a public university in France but the fact I was in a private one was actually great because basically all the, the sports that I needed were actually in the main exam venues because they were all small exam venues and also um in the business schools um reading time is included in the exam time so I also had plenty of time in my exams so okay. the only like the only thing I uh, encountered uh, was probably in my first two weeks of my French was a bit limited as you say as you would say yeah and yeah. Um, I had to do a lot of translating like in person and yeah. and also I have dyspraxia and a lot of people aren't aware of that condition as well um especially in France so I had yeah. to go into details with her but like she was so nice about it at the same time she just signed you just basically have to get a doctor to sign off on it mm-hmm. but um like I said my French school helped me arrange an appointment like and yeah. I got a, an appointment pretty quick for France and they appointment was free as well so yeah and um, it was grand like that was only only struggle and that was quite minor um and I got all the supports that I needed um so yeah like I was happy enough with that um yeah, so what were your main takeaways from Erasmus would you recommend pe- for people to go on Erasmus with a disability yeah I would definitely recommend it I mean I don't think that having a disability should hold anybody back from from doing an Erasmus because you know no matter what your disability is there are supports there there is funding there and there's ways around it um and it's just such an incredible experience that I don't think you know you should let that hold you back um my main takeaways um definitely I would say just being prepared, getting the conversation started nice and early in the academic year before you're going. Um, and yeah, just go there like with an open mind, ready to meet lots of new people. Um, you know, you're gonna make so many friends and um, it's just a, an amazing way to improve your language skills or whatever reason that you're going there for. I just think that I would definitely, definitely encourage anyone who's thinking about it to really look into it um because like I really don't think you'd regret it yeah no I definitely want to follow up what Alva said like going to with an open mind and obviously be very prepared beforehand like you may yeah. face some obstacles on the yeah. trendy end of things or on your receiving institution end of things but they can be sorted if you're organized and that you yeah have the necessary paperwork and you just have if as the saying goes if there's a will there's a way so exactly. yeah really, like I really recommend it like my French improved so much um I literally yeah. met so many cool interesting people and like yeah. I miss it so much now and it's honestly great when you come back to Trinity in final year and you have like a new a completely new perspective on things and you yeah. perspective not not that you have a perspective that not everyone else in your course has so that will yeah. obviously um that will make you stand out and follow the year as well so I definitely would recommend it was the best decision I ever made so yeah um is there anything you want to end the video with yeah just don't don't think at all that because you have a disability that you shouldn't go or that you can't go or that it won't be the same just definitely have an open mind and um go for it that's what I would say yeah no I just want to echo that like literally go for it and if you're prepared yeah. you'll be fine and just keep talking to the necessary people keep talking to disability service your exchange coordinator and be in regular contact with your host university before yeah. um before going because if you've done all those three things hopefully you should be fine and you should encounter less problems when you arrive there so available uh, supports that are available to you yeah. yeah so that sounds good um if anyone has any other questions um you, about the ability co-op you can email us at ability co-op at gmail.com and if you need to contact any of us um i'll give out my email so it's maddenj4 at tcd.ie i'll have it in the screen below perfect okay. um and well if anyone has any questions for me for a student with a physical disability my email is kellya 85 at tcd.ie perfect uh, thanks guys thanks for tuning in and listening and best of luck on your assets bye bye